question. Thank you very much for asking that. I didn't. I don't think I got a chance to show one. So uh, x squared minus 10 for x less than negative 3, and negative x squared plus c for x greater than negative 3. And they say determine the value of c so that the limit from either side exists. Great job. So find c. Thank you. Such that limit as x approaches negative 3 from either side from this function f of x exists. By the word exists, we, rem we mean is a, it is a number. Perfect. So by definition, when we say that the limit of a function as x approaches a from either side is L, we indirectly mean that the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left equals limit as x approaches a from the right from f of x, and it equals L. So I just recycled my papers, and I'm going to go back here for a second. So the limit from either side of 3 here does not exist because the left limit is 1 and the right limit is 2. So the function doesn't have to be defined here, but both sides have to approach the same number. So keeping that in mind, what is this? Keeping that in mind, I will have to determine this limit. So the left hand side from the left hand side of negative three, oops, from the left hand side of negative three, so limit as x approaches negative three from the left, it I have to use this branch, which is x squared minus ten with parentheses, and the other one limit as x approaches negative three from the right, negative three from the right is here, so I have to use the other branch. I don't think you can see this. I don't think I, I touched my camera and I messed up the position. Okay, and uh, so f negative 3 from the right, I have to use this, negative x squared plus c. So can anyone tell us um, what we get from the first one? Anyone? Anyone? Would it be a negative 1? Yes, because negative 3 squared is 9, when 9 minus 10 is negative 1, perfect. And what about here? Three plus c. So, careful here, because this is negative 3 squared with minus in front. So by the order of operations, we have this. When I square, I get 9. But there is a minus in front. So this is negative 9 plus c. These two, according to the definition of the limit, have to be the same. So therefore, negative 1 must equal negative 9 plus c. I move 9, I get c equals 8. So when c is 8, you may have a different problem. I don't know. I copied what I saw, what, they, what the system gave me. You may have a different situation, slightly different. Any questions on this problem? Any questions? Is this okay, everyone? Yes? No? Moving on, do you have anything else for me? Anything else? Okay, moving on then. You can stop me anytime, there is no problem. At any point in time you can. But is this understood? Everyone? Okay, I'm assuming you said yes. If you said no, I'll go back. Okay, so uh, let's talk about continuity now. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I should have asked. Do you have other questions for me? Anything else? Anything else? Anyone? Once? Twice? Okay, sold. So let's talk about continuity. This function, look, I start with my marker. I finish the graph. And now I lift the marker off the paper. This is a continuous function. Why? I was able to graph the entire graph without lifting the pencil marker pen off the paper. What about this situation? This function is not continuous. It has a jump discontinuity. Here is the third, the second type. This function is not continuous. It has an infinite discontinuity. This one, however, and I should say, these two situations cannot be in any way, shape, or form changed into a continuous function. But the third one can. This one is called removable. I can, I can remove it. I can remove it because I can... I can, I can present another graph, I can create another function, and just simply change one finite, one value, just fill this in. Here I will have to change infinitely many numbers or values. Here I have infinitely many numbers or values to change, but here only one. So I can create a new function by only changing one value of the function, or maybe two or maybe three, but finite. So we say that this is a removable discontinuity. I can remove it. What is the condition, the algebraic or calculus condition for a removable discontinuity? Limit from the left. Of course, this is A, this is L. So Sx approaches A from the left of f of x equals the limit of f of x as x approaches A from the right, but it does not equal the function value at that point. I want to write, uh, it's not L, it's F of A. That's what I meant. These are all L, but this is not L. This is L, this is L, but this is not L. So a removable discontinuity clearly states that both sides approach the same number, but they simply do not equal the function value at that point. And that's removable. So where is my 1.2? Right here. So let's take a look at uh, a couple of graphs. If you'd like to open on page 113, because I have some graphs on 113 that I would like us to look at. I don't know if you can see. Determine whether each of these functions uh, is continuous over the interval negative 6, 6. So negative 6, 6 is the entire graph. Obviously, the function is not continuous. It's continuous everywhere except at that point, which is negative 2, and it's a jump discontinuity. The same thing here. It's a jump discontinuity. Here, however, there is a tiny point that it's open. This one is a removable discontinuity, removable. The graph is continuous everywhere, but it's not defined at this point. So this is removable. And this one appears to be continuous everywhere. On the next page, 41, obviously this is an infinite discontinuity. The function is not continuous. Before we attack any other problem from here, from page 114, let's talk about continuity at a point. 
which you already have it here, but we have to write the definition. Definition of continuity at a point. Let's say x equals a. This is an important definition and we have to remember it. Limit. As x approaches a from the left of f of x equals limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x and of course it has to equal I, sk I keep writing L, I don't know why it has to equal f of a in other words the limit from the left and the limit from the right have to be the same, have to exist and they have to equal the function value at that point then we say that the function is continuous at a point. However, we have also something called left, left hand continuity, right hand continuity. Left, right continuity. How does this look like? Left continuity will be something like this. What does this mean? that the limit from the left of f of x equals the function value at that point. And this one, of course, would be from the right, where the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x will equal f of a. So left-hand continuity, right-hand continuity. The limit from the left and the function value are the same the limit from the right and the function value are the same. Finally, continuity uh, on an interval. So let's say on the interval a comma b, f continuous on a comma b if it is continuous at any point on a comma b. It makes sense. So it's continuous on an interval if it's continuous at every point at, on that interval. And now all we need to do is practice. I always um, value your contribution. We have tons of problems to look at for continuity. Anything you like pages 114, 115, anything you want. If you don't choose, I will. Okay, one, two, three. I'm going to choose 54, you'll choose the next. 54. So let's illustrate or see how this works. 54 on page 114. We have a function. It's given to us. It's a piecewise defined function. Uh, one third x plus 4 for x less than or equal to 3 and 2x minus 1 for x greater than 3. So one third x plus four, x less than, I check because sometimes this is blurry. Okay, I think I'm okay. Is it continuous at x equals three? Continuous at x equals three? Why or why not? I have no idea. All I have to do is state the definition of continuity at x equals three, definition of continuity at x equals 3. Limit as x approaches 3 from the left must equal limit as x approaches 3 from the right must equal f of 3. If all these are yes, then I will say yes. If something is not consistent, I'll say no. Which is the left hand side? And you have to be very careful and make sure that you look at the left-hand side of 3. And you will see that we have this function, 
that's the one I will pl plug in here, one third x plus four. From the right of three, I'll have to put in two x minus one. And of course, I have to use the top branch where the equal symbol is, and I have to plug in three. So this will be one third times three plus four. This is f of three. If all these three numbers are the same, I'll go back and say yes. If those numbers are not the same, I'll say no. So, can anyone give us the, uh, the left-hand limit? What will that equal to? It's a five. Yes, because one-third times three is one, one plus four is five. Awesome. Can anyone give us the middle? Very good. I don't have to recalculate this because this must be the same. So obviously I'll go back and I'll say yes. Why? Because the limit from the left, the limit from the right, and the function value at that point are all the same. They all exist. They are all equal. So therefore the function is continuous at that point. Anything else you would like to choose? Anything else? Any preference? I think we should look at one more before we move on. Can we do... Uh... 53. 53 it is. Where are you 53? Yes. So it's the same idea. Let's, you want, you want, you really want to? I mean. Um, yeah. No, okay then. Um, can we do, um, can I do, uh, can we do 42? Yes, we can do 42. And after that we'll do, um, we'll see what 42 is, but I'm sure you picked something else. I would like so also to look at uh, some, something like this from 63 to 72, and uh, maybe also at an application. Uh, you said 42. 42. This one here? Okay. Let's take a look at 42. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So use the graphs and functions in exercises 37 through 41, so we have connection back. Um, to answer each of the following, if an expression does not exist, state that fact. So, 42, I guess, 42, 42 will correspond, so uh, use the graphs to do some, okay, so how do I know which function goes with 41? So I'm assuming with 42, so I'm assuming 42 goes with 37. G, F, H, yes, yes, okay, I see. They are denoted by G, F, H, and okay, I got it. So in 42, we are asked to find the limit of G of X as X approaches 1 from the right. So the limit as X approaches 1 from the right is negative 2. It's hard to see for you, I'm sure, if you don't have this pulled up. Then we want the limit from g of x as x approaches um, 1 from the left. It's still negative 2 because it's a point of continuity. Uh, the limit from either side, it's still, negative, it's still negative 2 because it's continuous. Find g of 1 is still negative 2 because it's continuous at that point. Is g continuous at x equals 1? Yes, because the left limit, the right limit, and the function value are all the same. And find the limit as x approach is uh, negative 2. Yes. As x approaches negative 2 from the left, we get 4. As x approaches negative 2 from the right, we get negative 3. Therefore, the limit from the left and from the right do not, the limit from either side is D and E, 
So the function is discontinuous at that point. Maybe next time I should bring it up on my screen and um, share the screen. I think it's better than showing it like that. Okay. So it's not continuous at negative 2. Okay, I'd like to look at a uh, problem like um, 64 on page 115. Uh, we are given a function which is f of x, it's 1 over x squared minus 6x plus 8. Uh, is it continuous as x equals 3? Why or why not? Okay, we know that when we factor this function, we get x minus 2 and x minus 4. So we know that x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote for such a rational function. And uh, x equals 4 is also a vertical asymptote. So we know for sure that the function will not be continuous at 2 and 4. It will have infinite discontinuity. So, however, I don't need this because I'm asked to study the function at x equals 3. 